love Mondays. You know, I, I, I actually really do. Monday is like the most exciting day of the week for me because uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I know what I need to work on. I know who, I am, who I'm going to talk to pretty much, but you never know. It's like, you know, being an entrepreneur and running your own business and kind of, you know, just being in charge of your own destiny. It's so like invigorating and stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know who I'm going to talk to, who's who I'm going to meet, who I'm going to encounter today. And it's just super exciting where in the past... Mondays were the pits. Oh, one one thing I do know about the office here in New Jersey is it is not San Diego. This weather is not the same. Oh, I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Look at this corporate entity. Yeah, Market Press New Jersey. Uh, way different than Market Press San Diego, but it works. This is how we get it done. Oh, proposals, proposals, proposals. Oh, man. Frustrating sometimes doing proposals when I don't know. <clears throat> I'm really I'm not in the business of I'm not in the business of uh, doing proposals. I'm in the business of get, achieving results. And sometimes my hands are so tied. Sometimes my hands are so tied with proposals and with different things that we have to do that it makes it really difficult to be effective. Um, a lot of people have a budget to go from Earth. To the moon, yet <clears throat> they want to go from Earth to Mars, <laughs> and there's that gap there that you know it's my job to make them understand the value and how it's going to help their business, you know, if they can get the budget to do that. And a lot of times, you know, you know we're paid from a spreadsheet, so we always want to be paid from a spreadsheet, not a, a bank account. So what that means is we want to just be effective enough so that they can take funds from allocated for in column A and move on to column B, which would be R. So uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes. And Also with that, my love of documentaries and kind of the day in their life, the peek behind the red, you know, the, the red rope or the back. One of my favorite things here about the uh, New Jersey office, as I try not to fall down the stairs, is the cafeteria we have down here. So pretty cool. It's a... Uh, I always feel a little out of place. Jeans and hoodie and sneakers. A bunch of guys with suits and ties, but they can't all be me, I guess, right? So, here we go. One of the most frustrating things about, honestly, between living in California, living in New Jersey, and working back and forth, is my bank seems to flag every transaction I have and I need to be on the phone with the fraud team like every, I don't know, seven days. I know it's for my protection, but man, it's a pain in the ass after a while because it's just, you know, I have people trying to run my card that work for me who <clears throat> it gets declined and all that stuff. It's just not a bad look. It's not a good look rather. So it's just like one of those things is just a pain. Like why can't they figure it out that I'm always here and I'm always there? I'm here and I'm there. So, I don't know. In effort to be as transparent as possible and not all rose-colored glasses here with the vlog, you know, I want to show you guys what stresses a business owner out. And it's one of those things that it's not all fun and games that, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into our day. So, that is what stresses business owners out. It's all good. I mean, it, it, it's our, our receivables are usually a quick cycle, but things like that, numbers like that, will stress you out. Right. Good day uh, here. Got a lot of got a lot done. Uh, good stuff. I mean, all good stuff. You know, it's a roller coaster. We always talk about riding the roller coaster and fighting a good fight. You know, today was an up and down day. A couple people stressed me out. <clears throat> AR stresses me out. But the good news is, is that there's work and there is receivables. So, and it, none of the, all, it's all healthy receivables. You know, the other stuff is, is like, I can do some things to make this work a little bit easier procedurally, I guess. You know, how I handle situations and whatnot. It's all good, it's all in a day. Uh, I get to walk out, it's actually very, very nice out right now here in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. And I'm going to drive across the street, go to my local New Jersey gym, then uh, go out to dinner tonight, 
take it easy, get a good night's sleep. I'm gonna get up tomorrow, I'm gonna fucking do it all over again. So, that's the deal. Yes, I really do come here. I just don't say that. Fit body, fit mind, fit business. Just wrapped up at the gym. Oh, good workout, get some cardio in. Been sick, so it's been difficult. But, uh, you know, great gym here, Lifetime Fitness. Absolutely love it, expensive but worth it. There's something about old guys in locker rooms. I'm 45, I'm not considering myself old. Let's say north of 65. They love strutting around naked. I don't know what it is. Maybe you get to some point where you truly do not give a fuck about anything or anybody around you. Or is it just one of those inherited qualities like, I don't know, I'm 65, this is what I do. I don't know, I don't wanna think about that one anymore. And if I put that disturbing image in your head, I'm sorry, it's funny, but I'm sorry. Got the long up and down day that we determined was a good day. Went to the gym, went to dinner in one of our favorite spots, Huntley Tavern. And uh, I had the filet and you had? A hamburger. Ham What'd you have? A hamburger. Hamburger, we're gonna have dessert. Call a night, just a nice low key night. Um, I don't know, one of my last days left here. And then, uh, <laughs> pouty stink face. That's not a stink face, that's a pouty face, right? And then we'll just uh, yeah, just have a nice quiet night, get up tomorrow, and uh, do it all over again. So, all right, till then. Morning, everyone. So, started the day kind of early, submitting vlog one to YouTube after editing and getting it kind of all straightened up. I don't know, interesting process. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy. I'm happy with it, for sure. But, you know, it's going to get better, you know, like anything else. It's uh, a work in progress, so there it is, vlog one went live today, the 8th, which isn't bad when I just filmed it, edited it, and shot everything on the 5th. So uh, I don't aspire for this to be a daily vlog, but at the same time, you know, this is, uh, this is all part of the deal, and other bloggers, vloggers, and content creators can all, you know, kind of attest to the fact that you just keep working to get better and just keep doing things a little bit better, a little bit different. Just keep moving forward. I always uh, I always say uh, perfection is the enemy of progress. So, man, I'm just going to create stuff, put it to the world, take your feedback, and you know what? Make things better as I can. So, here it is. Vlog 1 is live. Look at that mug. It's early. It's about 7 o'clock and... When I'm home in California, I like to go to the gym as early as possible. But here in New Jersey, sometimes it's cold out here. And I just don't want to go. So what I try to do is wake my brain up a different way. And, you know, I'll usually, like, play... I'll try to play some guitar or something like that. Because it's easy for someone like me. And I know a lot of you business owners and entrepreneurs who I know personally or we know through interconnected circles can agree with me. <clears throat> it's easy to jump into work mode right away. I can lay in bed, answer emails, do this, and you know, just kind of get things going. But I think it's important sometimes to have that work-life blend where you can sit there and just kind of kind of relax and just warm, warm your brain up for the day so that you can be your best. And it's, it's really important, you know, to have that kind of balance. For me, anyway, it's really important to have that kind of balance or else I'm not... I'm not at my best all day. I don't know. Ooh, it is nice. It's really, really, really nice. Cool pond right here out in front of the house here with the geese and everything. And uh, today is going to be one of those days that I already kind of know what I'm in for. Uh, I got a lot of meetings. Uh, three, four meetings. Still have a bunch of. Dev I need to do, I need to close some deals for a bullpen and uh, just continue to make things happen. I mean, that's kind of my motto. I wake up every day and just say, hey, let's make something happen today. So, got to keep the hustle. Like Jay says, can't knock the hustle. So, let's do this. You know, on the commute today, you know, I have about a 10-minute commute from Chatham to Berkeley Heights. 
and uh, just kind of straight down Diamond Hill Road if you guys know where that is. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I get these thoughts, kind of, you know, commuter thoughts or whatever, treadmill thoughts sometimes, you know, and it's, you know, a lot of times you're influenced by people and how hard is it to remain influenced by somebody but not copy what they do? You know, there's a lot of similarities and they say that, you know, what you know, uh, you know, copying is the most sincere form of flattery and blah, blah, blah. I think that's bullshit. I think that copying is probably get, get you started. But at some point you find your own steez, you find your own sticker, you know, you, the thing that you do. Because, you know, if you're like me, you want to be an original. So, you know, it, it's difficult. You know, I'm influenced by a lot of different professionals, you know, in the marketing space. Guys like, you know, Jay Bear and, and Gary Vaynerchuk and... Uh, other entrepreneurs like uh, you know Mark Cuban and and guys like that and it's like you know I don't want to put out and publish content in a similar fashion like what they do you know you know but at some time sometimes you just need a starting point so you know you know I, I've been struggling with the little signature thing in the left of the vlog and if you look back on my old personal vlogs the GRT2 Vlogs, vlogs on my, or I'm sorry, or videos on my gregtaylor.net site. I've had that signature there for years. So it's like somebody else does it. Does that mean I'm copying them? No, actually, you know, if you date back, you know, it looks like we're utilizing the same idea. So, I mean, it's, it's always that fine line where you don't want to be perceived as a copycat. You always want to be original. But you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. God damn it. Those guys are really successful and great at what they do for a reason, you know? And so if I can take, my goal is to take their ideas and my own original ideas, leverage them, and make the best shit possible for me, my brand, my business, my family, and my clients. So just an interesting kind of commuter thought as I just pulled into the uh, marketing press office here at Berkeley Heights. So It's funny, sometimes you get in situations <clears throat> and relationships you know, where somebody constantly tells you, you know, you suck or you don't do what you say you're going to do for me or blah, 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 blah. And, you know, professionally, personally. So my answer is, then leave me alone. Why? Why, Why keep engaging with me? Stop. If I continually disappoint you, which I don't do on purpose, of course, why even email me anymore why call me why text me just let's just go our own ways this is obviously not worth thing working you some people love to live in misery and the complaints that they don't get you know proper credit or blah 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 and that's just bullshit and it's not a way i'm going to do things so no time here's where the grace comes in remaining calm with another with one client after somebody else just made a huge mistake that I'm still pretty hot and emotional about. Balancing that out is fucking difficult. What a fucking day. <laughs> Leaving Mark and Impress, Berkeley Heights. Be back in a couple weeks. Funny, we work in a corporate office that kind of clears out around 6.30. So, oh man. All right, actually pretty nice out right now. Uh, it might be earlier than that. It might be six. <clears throat> I'm pretty nice out right now. I'm not freezing my ass off. So uh, this is, you know, pretty much the last working day here for New Jersey. Go back to California tomorrow. And uh, hi, Julie. Hi. Nice hat. Okay. You can't see it. No. Here at one of my favorite places. I've been coming to this place since I was like 13 years old. Sterling Hotel. Good spot, good food, good beers, family, people, right? Yes. Like, they have a good beer garden when it's uh, when the weather is really nice. The ironic thing about the Sterling Hotel is there's really no rooms here. It's not really a hotel, right? <clears throat> oh man, here we are. We're busy.
Great meal at the hotel. A lot of fun being back here. A lot of good memories here. I love this place. What do you think? I asked, what do you think? Not wave. Uh, I want ice cream. Okay. Well, there you go. That's more of a standard response. She wants ice cream. But <clears throat> headed back San Diego tomorrow, 12.50 flight. That's another Vogue. I think you should... Okay. Well, I got derailed for a moment. Julie wanted to know something about a friend of mine that I, I'm, I, I can't facilitate at the moment. But, yeah, man. <clears throat> Be back in. No, it's just on me. It's she. Julie's waving over. <laughs> She's waving over here, like the camera's on her. But it's really on me, because this is this is me. All right, hand one. No, really. San Diego tomorrow, twelve fifty. Land six o'clock. <clears throat> back California. Claim my home again. We'll be back here in about 10 days and uh, trying to continue making shit happen. So, all right. All right, so fun vlog segment we'll do from time to time. Julie is super inquisitive and she loves to ask questions. So, she's going to ask me three questions and I'll answer them. So, here we Question go. Question one When did you first grow a beard? <laughs> I grew up. First, first time I grew a beard <clears throat> or this beard? No, first, time. first time, I think it was like 20 or 21, maybe like 19, something like that. I would have this patchy, terrible facial hair always, and then I would go back and forth. But this beard, I grew when I would move to Arizona. I, uh, I was previously with somebody who hated beards, so I broke up with her, <clears throat> left New Jersey, went to Arizona, and I grew a beard on the ride out there and I've always had some sort of facial hair ever since. That's why you grew it, you didn't like that girl? Well, I mean, that's just kind of how it all started. And then I just sort of liked it. Uh, would you ever shave it? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, for the right reasons or whatever, I might shave it. What I don't know. Right uh, if I was just sick and tired of it. If I was sick and tired of it, I needed to look very different than my driver's license photo. And if I needed to slip into Mexico without anybody knowing. Is it itchy ever? And it's not itchy. Sometimes, <laughs> these are weird questions. So all you beard bros out there, when it reaches a certain length, it gets itchy here, and then you get rogue hairs, and if they go into your nose, that's when shit gets itchy and tickly. What's a road hair? A road hair is one that does not grow like the rest of them. It grows like up or out or whatever. What do you do when you get a road hair? You pull it out? I fucking pull that shit up. I pull that stuff out. I thought you were going to ask me a better question. A different, not better. These are good, but different ones. I love these questions. I think they're wonderful questions. Okay. Do you ever shave yourself or do you always go You know, I do have a razor and a <coughs> beard trimmer at home, but... I never use it, I'll tell you why. One, I always mess it up somehow, in some way, and I'm not, never happy with it. Two, it's worth the 10 bucks to pay somebody else to do it, because then I do not have to clean up the bathroom and the sink. Oh, that's the worst. Right? Wait, you hated that when you shaved your beard? Well, no, when my brother oh, was okay. everywhere. Yeah. I didn't clean it up, my mom did. Yeah. Um, another question, do yep. you have a conditioner in your beard? Never. Why? Why? Just good jeans. I got good jeans. Huh. Thanks, Ma Dukes. And you'll know Ma Dukes from vlog two because she was the one that was feisty as hell as we were wine tasting. Any other questions? Uh, would you ever just have a mustache? Nah, that's too like sleeper creeper, like uh, stalker. Like uh, Coach Johnson, pedophile, pedophile, no. Last question. Tell me the story about your gang playing tattoo. Oh man, okay. So, <clears throat> I actually found the video today and I know that that's why this question came about. So, Gang Playing is a collaborative workspace I worked out of in Chandler, Arizona. 
And by definition, you know, our motto was be dangerous. You know, we had a pirate flag flying. <clears throat> because a gangplank is, you know, the pirates would make you walk the plank. But then they would also, you know, a gangplank took you from a ship. And like the proverbial, like, rough waters of being an entrepreneur to land. It's a little bit more stable. And when a lot of our businesses, mine included, <clears throat> kind of grew up and the collaborative workspace wasn't working for us any longer we, we left and we had our own offices but we were always a part of gang crime well backtrack a bunch of years I, I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm going back four years or so five years maybe we did an event called Gangplank uh, we did a, a Gangplank Junior event <clears throat> and Gangplank Junior was Gangplank for kids it was on Saturdays and we would teach kids different skills. I taught a media class and photography, but uh, Mike Benner uh, on Twitter at Refried Chicken, <clears throat> he uh, he came and he wanted to have his buddy teach tattoo class. So it was it was interesting. Of course, having tattoos and blah 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 blah. I volunteered to go, and it was it was phenomenal. So Nathan Houts, nasty, nasty Nate from I forget what tattoo shop he was with at the time, brought a bunch of tattoo guns, and these kids of various ages from six to fifteen were tattooing oranges because I guess the orange has a similar epidermis. <clears throat> or, or the skin of an arm is similar to the skin of a person, an epidermis. And uh, after a while, I, you know, Andrew Byer, Susan Byer, one of my great friends, you know, her son Andrew at the time said, "I want to tattoo somebody," and I said, "All right." So it was me. So he was, uh, he was 15, with Susan's consent, consent, you know, with Nate looking on. Andrew Byer gave me a tattoo here on my chest. That's the gangplank skull. And uh, it's, it was probably one of my most fondest memories of uh, working at a gangplank and uh, being associated with the community. I know like some of my greatest friends were there, like Derek Neighbors, Lori Neighbors. <clears throat> Their son Noah was there doing stuff. Uh, Chris Connery, and I think Chris's daughter was like six at the time. Amy gave Chris a tattoo, and like Noah, I know, did some stuff on Derek. And it was just, and Susan was overlooking Andrew working on me. It was just one of the greatest gangplank moments ever. So that's it.